So we've gone through tier one and tier two, let's get into the tier three. So with the tier three, this is where really we define actual modules, this is where the rubber meets the road, and this is where the enabling of cross-platform reuse comes into play. Because just because you have the interfaces defined doesn't mean that you can take a graphics processor with this one same interface as an SBC and swap them out for one another, right? You still need to have the performance requirements defined somewhere. And this is really where host shines, and that's the tier three level. Um, so, the tier three, it sits below the tier two, so a tier three's interfaces will all follow what was defined up at the tier two level. And again, you can have a tier three for, you'll have different tier threes for different tier twos. So depending on which one they're under, those are the interfaces that will be defined. But they also derive the performance specifications from the uh, design process of, a pro of an actual system. And so the during the design process, you'll modularize all the capabilities into different performance requirements. And then you can create tier threes for those different modules that you've decided are part of your system. And the tier threes, as well as the components themselves in some kind of maybe a data sheet, for instance, um, those are all down in the component registry. So there's an actual registry where you can go in and see the different tier threes and the different components that have been verified to the tier threes, which are available, which have been used on different platforms, that type of thing. So the goal of tier three is really that platform reuse is a major goal. So again, like we stated really early in this presentation, um, many systems require similar module functionality, but there's not a great sharing across different system designs. And so, you know, once you select a vendor, you're typically tied to that original vendor. But at the tier three, you can go into the component repository and see what modules have been verified to tier threes, and you know those tier threes are being used on other platforms, so you can then reuse the modules. Um, what this hopes to do is reduce the sustainment and upgrade costs, and also ease integration efforts for component upgrades, because these modules have been verified to tier threes already. Um, increase vendor competition. Vendors could have insight into what type of modules are desired by different platforms and thus come in and build a cheaper or better module to get their models out there and used. Promote that reuse across systems. And all the tier threes will define the open interfaces that were defined up in the tier two. And these are government owned interface definitions. Right. So there are certain roles and responsibilities that are involved within the tier three just to make sure this functions smoothly and there's responsibilities of the acquisition authority to make sure that we'll go into what they need to do but really to make sure that these tier threes are adequate tier threes and um, are necessary for their system. So the acquisition authority is the main acquirer of a system such as a program office and they oversee all the verification efforts and they have final authority and final say for things. The integrator, potentially such as a prime integrator, for instance, are who has the authority to design this host-based system. The verification authority, they review the different artifacts, both the vendor and the tier three artifacts. And then a vendor are, such as a module vendor, someone that creates these components, these host components, and that verifies that they meet a tier three. So we have a sequence diagram which goes through how a new tier three is created. And so you have a system, the acquisition authority, such as a program office, they have a system they want to build. So they go to an integrator, right? And the integrator designs that system. Hopefully the integrator is utilizing existing tier threes and existing modules within the component registry. But there's, there's going to be situations where there doesn't, the component doesn't exist that meets the needs of their system. And so they're going to have to come up with a new tier three. And so they need to request to the acquisition authority that a new tier three needs to be created. And the acquisition authority needs to make sure that that is a true and there's nothing that is similar or could be used within the component registry. 
And so the integrator, once it gets approved, will create a tier three and then it'll go through back and forth between the acquisition authority, the verification authority, and the integrator to make sure that tier three is sufficient and good. And eventually it's gonna be approved to be released as a tier three. So that tier three will actually go into the component repository where vendors can go in and see which tier threes are available, what can they build to. And so a vendor will come in and they'll pull out that tier three. Let's see, a new tier three is in there. Let me build a module to it. Or the integrator may let the vendors know we've released a tier three, you know, please start building modules to it, that type of thing. And so the vendor will now create a module and verify it that it meets the tier three and submit that documentation to the verification authority. That then there goes some back and forth or finalizing the documentation. The acquisition authority has the final say that it does meet it. And then that component documentation can be submitted to the registry. And what this also helps is now that you know that the components that are in the registry are actually being used on systems as well. Right? That it's going to be used on that integrator systems. So that helps with the reuse because you know when you look through that component repository, there's um, modules that are used on other systems. Um, so really, for the new tier threes, uh, it's the acquisitions authority to make sure that tier threes are only generated when none of the current tier threes satisfy, satisfy the needs of the integrator. So this requires the effort from the acquisition authority to limit, limit what goes in there. Um, also, the decision authority needs to be clearly defined for generation and registration of a new tier three specification. Um, it needs to be clearly tied to a system performance requirement. There needs to be a reason for it. Don't just want a proliferation of tier threes added to the repository. And vendors can create new components and register them against the tier threes uh, with, as they request, but they cannot create random tier threes. They're really trying to prevent a proliferation of tier threes not tied to performance specifications and platforms to be put in there. Um, so you, when you select a component that's in the registry, you know you're, you're using a component that's used on another system. Uh, each component in the registry is linked to at least one tier three specification so you know that it conforms not only to a tier three specification but also as you flow up to a tier two standard. Again, not all the tier two requirements flow to every component type, which if you utilize a CVM, you'll see which requirements flow down to which component types. A switch will have different requirements than an SBC, for example. Um, the tier threes, they're a combination of that tier two interface definition and uh, performance requirements from your product performance specification. Within a tier three, every tier three has an RVM, a requirements verification metrics that specifies the verification methods and lists all the requirements within a tier three. So that RVM will have all your tier two interface requirements and the product performance specification requirements. So you have a single Euler matrix with all the requirements for that tier three module has to meet. And Another thing the acquisition authority needs to make sure of is that only those interfaces and performance requirements defined at the tier three should be used in your system that's using that component. For instance, um, if you define in your tier three that you want a PCI Gen 3 capable device, and then you go out and you end up in your system using Gen 4, um, any other vendor that builds to that Gen 3 capable device may not include Gen 4 because it's more expensive and those aren't going to be able to be used in your system. So either the acquisition authority needs to say, no, you're going to use Gen 3 to the integrator or update the Tier 3 to say Gen 4 to promote the reuse. So the Tier 3, it specifies the interfaces and capabilities in a sufficient enough detail that two components that meet the same Tier 3 can be used in your application, um, that they're interchangeable between each other, so they're mechanically the same, electrically the same, and logically the same. They also meet the same minimum specified requirements. Um, they can have subtle performance differences beyond that's what's required, and that's okay. Uh, again, that'll be down to the integrator and acquisition authority to decide based on cost or whatever their decisions might be. Uh, and there admittedly will be some varying levels of integration. 
And you're not going to be able to take one board and just swap it with another directly without looking into the application software, the APIs or drivers. Those things could change between them, but you know the hardware is going to have the interfaces that you're looking for and the performance. And it'll take some software effort to get those up to speed and be able to use in your system. Um, tier 3 specifications give customers the data rights to the interfaces. So that helps to support uh, cost-effective statement and upgrades. You now have all the interface definitions and performance definitions within um, an open specification. And like we mentioned, the details are variable depending on the module type. But host makes that easy with the CVAM to know what applies to which module. And where do these tier 3s all go? They all go into a component registry. All right. So the component registry will contain a list of tier 3s, different specifications, which tier 2s those specifications meet, and then also which components fall under each tier 3. So you could be able to search for specific components to see what tier 3s they meet, or you can have a tier 3 specification in which components are under that. Also, it will have potentially some insight into platforms that use that and the environmental details for those components as well. So kind of ran through this with the diagram, but um, these tier threes and components are in the registry are linked to some kind of a data sheet. So you actually can take a look at what the component does and some details of each component, and also it'll be linked to their environmental classes. So uh, you'll have the tier three spec, which has the interfaces and performance, processing type performance and requirements, and then it'll also have which V to 47 class these components have been verified to. So you can go in and potentially see one component has been verified to multiple classes to be able to use in your system. And then you can have multiple components as shown for a single tier three. So a brief example of that is if you're an integrator wants an x86 architecture single board computer and to find some minimum performance requirements for that, um, the tier three would just say right, an x86 processor you could go further and define a specific processor, but for this example, we'll just say x86. You'll define some performance requirements and what interfaces are required. So the registry could actually contain, and vendors could actually build multiple HPCs right, that have x86 uh, architecture. So it could be a different like I level, so core i5 or i7, potentially maybe an Intel Atom type processor. Um, it'll also define what environmental classes they meet. And then it'd be up to the vendor, really, to decide based on cost or needs of their system as to what, what component they select and then what components get verified and um, put into the registry.